record uh, from Kachum. So if we have the green light from the, yep, all right. So take it away, Richard. Okay, uh, th thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. I'm Richard, I'm the CMO of Kachum. And uh, it's great to be back here at AWE. It's the second time I present here. And it's nice to see some familiar faces in the crowd as well. Um, actually, I, I had a plan not to give any, to make any jokes at the start of my presentation because of the time. But uh, I won't be able to do a live demo as I'd hoped, again, because of the internet connectivity. So I'll uh, come up with an impromptu joke. Um, <laughs> so so uh, I've attended a lot of events and I remember attending an event uh, a little while ago uh, in, um, in London, which was on how locations brand themselves. And actually, uh, there were many different cities and states uh, represented. And since we have a few Dutch people here from Amsterdam, uh, this is uh, for you, uh, dedicated to you. So basically, um, the, the brand manager for the city of Amsterdam, he, he stood up and he said, OK, I've really enjoyed the talks today, but um, I just want to dispel a myth about Amsterdam because uh, I'm the brand manager for the city and it's uh, simply you know, not true when people say that Amsterdam is famous for sex, drugs and rock and roll because we have absolutely no rock and roll whatsoever. <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, I'll, uh, having said that, I'll give you a bit of an overview of uh, what I'm going to be talking about today. So the aim is to give you some insights and general best practice into AR content creation. And at Kachum, we strongly believe AR should be actionable. It, this is a theme which Ori mentioned today in the opening speech as well. So I'm, uh, I'm glad he touched upon that as well today. Um, and I'll give you some examples of exactly what we at Kachum mean by actionable AR. And how our crafter toolkit um, supports that. And then I'll wrap up by giving you some do's and don'ts of 3D content creation, just because I think that's also relevant to within this context. How many of you are actually familiar with uh, Kachum of, or have heard of Kachum before? Okay, so it's the second time I asked that question, and it's nice to see a little bit of a, a, a trend upwards in that. I hope next year is going to be even more. So basically, just to give you a little bit of a uh, insight, a quick elevator pitch for Kachum, we are a spin-off of Telefonica Telecoms Group, which is the fifth largest telecoms group in the world. Um, we're completely independent, and. Um, <clears throat> We've, we've actually uh, developed image recognition technology, which is currently on over 30 million smartphones worldwide. And at the beginning of this year, we launched a new product, which is Crafter. And the aim of Crafter was to combine what is arguably one of the best image recognition technologies in the world with the easiest to use AR toolkit. And I think ease of use, again, is one of those uh, themes which uh, I mentioned before. And we also support that. Um, we're also going to be launching offline image recognition later this year. So uh, this is a, a pre-announcement of that. And the aim with that is to provide seamless experiences, whether you're online and connected or offline without a connection. These are uh, some of our customers uh, that we have today. In fact, we have over 2,000 customers on the Crafter platform. Um, these are some that I can mention. There are many more as well. Um, some of them may well be in this room as well. Uh, so uh, don't be surprised. And um, from augmenting print to providing image recognition uh, for the blind, uh, for example, for Envision America, we really cover a very wide range of use cases. And, and it's growing fast. And it's fantastic to see so many people trying AR and doing some really cool stuff with our toolkit. Now, if you speak to an agency today, um, you know, doesn't matter where in the world you are, you often uh, you know, get people to associate AR with you know, flying 3D objects. So there is this, still this kind of requirement for a wow effect. And for us at Kachum, we really aim to move beyond that and to flip that on its head and convert AR into something which is actionable, which really has a functional and valuable use for the end user. Uh, and I think this is, again, one of those, those themes which uh, we'll see more and more of and we'll talk more and more of in the, in, in the coming days and weeks. You know, in fact, imagine how much more powerful AR can be uh, if you let a, a buyer scan a product which is on a shelf, interact with that, and in less than three taps, let them buy that on impulse. You know, that's really a very powerful use case. And there's, there's more out there, which I'm going to mention next. 
for example, um, you know, we work with Glamour magazine, which belongs to uh, the Condé Nast uh, print group, and we enable readers to scan individual pages in the magazine and then uh, for individual products which are featured in those pages, link those to mobile commerce stores. So again, in a very quick way, quick sequence, the app user can actually uh, scan a product, tap to add it to the shopping basket or the wish, wish list, and then proceed to checkout to pay for it. And it's a very fast experience. Um, brands love that. It, it really puts a mobile commerce uh, store in, in the hands of everyone. And it provides this interactivity uh, and connection between physical print images, uh, virtual goods that you can actually um, go, go through and buy. And you know, in this context, I would say that AR, uh, as in creating something which is more complex than image recognition, will probably make things overly complicated. So this is a good use case where pure image recognition is suffice. So you scan the image and you just link it through to a mobile commerce store. Now, a well-known example of something which is quite different is the AR uh, catalog app for IKEA uh, for last year and for this year as well, where by using 3D models, you really are providing a solution to a popular pain point, which is, you know, how does this piece of furniture, which uh, I may just see flat-packed in the warehouse, how does that look in my own living room? So this is the opposite side of the spectrum where 3D AR type of effects really add to the experience and enhance it. So um, let me tell you a little bit about Crafter. It's a uh, you know, our new product from this year, and I'm very excited about what it can do and to see so many people are providing some very positive feedback about it. Uh, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, we launched it uh, this year, and the aim was to combine you know, our image recognition capabilities with the easiest to use AR toolkit. And from the initial feedback, um, we are making some good inroads into that. In fact, you don't even need to be a programmer to set up a basic AR experience using Crafter. Um, I was going to show you how, how easy it is. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do that. But um, we do have a free trial, so you're welcome to sign up. You can then access a web panel. And then by downloading an app for iTunes, for iPhone, or for Android, you can link what you're creating on the web panel to an app. And you can scan things and see how well that works. You know, in, in, we really aim to get you up and running in three simple steps. So you craft the experience, you set up objects for, for recognition, and then if you want to do the AR thing, you can actually uh, create fantastic AR content, which can be videos. It can be virtual buttons, so people can actually click on buttons and be taken through to a website. Um, and you can also obviously have 3D models. At our stand within the exhibition area, we have some great examples of some 3D models which are on our platform. Um, a point there to make is that we support all common file formats for 3D models, so you don't have to worry about you know, what, is it going to be compatible or not. Um, we support, you know, we're pretty much agnostic in this respect. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave uh, plenty of space for questions, so if you have any questions around this, please let me know later. Um, so these are some of the highlights uh, of the features of, of Crafter. We provide drag and drop, um, so it's a very easy interface to interact with. It's very intuitive. If, if you're familiar with other tools, um, you'll find this very easy. Um, we provide a choice between either cloud-based image recognition or AR experiences. And again, you just tap on which one you want. It's very intuitive. You can manage a lot of digital content. We allow you to store content within our, our CMS. We also provide analytics, so you can, uh, you know, I mean, this is something I get asked a lot, you know, how can I justify in investing in AR? And the reason we provide analytics is just to be able to support that and provide stats on how well these campaigns are doing and how well the apps are performing in specific contexts. We also provide some uh, very good SDKs. We have example code as well for developers. We have two great APIs. One is a management API that allows you to upload images in bulk, for example. And also we have a recognition API, which are both very stable, very well documented. We have a fantastic documentation section on our website. And uh, I know that developers love that. So um, in addition, we have a very good support team. Uh, you can reach by email. And they have a 95% response rate within 24 hours. So uh, I'm very proud of our support team and what they do for us. So I, I can't actually show you uh, the live demo, but this is basically what the, um, what the uh, user interface looks like. 
Um, you can rotate the scene according to different planes. Uh, you can see objects in 360 degrees. You can place virtual buttons. You can position them, resize them. Um, there's plenty of good stuff you can do and really tailor and customize the experience, but do so in a very easy way. Um, so I have three minutes left. I do want to leave plenty of time for questions. So uh, uh, I'm not going to do the demo, uh, unfortunately, um, which is a shame because it was very good. It was very, I basically, in less than one minute, I was going to be able to show you how you can do that. Um, but please come to our booth later. And I'll do that for you there with the internet we have there. And finally, some uh, do's and don'ts of 3D content creation. Um, you know, as, as I've mentioned, you can create a AR experiences that support 3D models. Um, and you can also create virtual buttons, but you can also import your 3D models. There are some, you know, some good do's and don'ts um, that um, our partner in 3D content creation, Solis, has uh, come up with for us. And you know, they emphasize the need to work in low polygon counts uh, just to make the, uh, the 3D models easier to upload and don't, so they don't use too much space in terms of memory as well. Um, they, they say that uh, it's best to combine models so that um, you reduce draw cells and texture maps and improve performance, and finally to use normal smoothing. When, when you create these 3D models, it's also very tempting to uh, you know, make things a little bit too complex and overpopulate the scene, but in many cases, this doesn't add any extra value. Um, so we do recommend to avoid doing that, both in terms of the scene and the ceiling. And um, you know, if, unless your expertise is 3D modeling, um, we would recommend you use a, you know, an external partner that has that expertise because these models are quite complex um, and uh, you know, we can provide help with that uh, even though we don't do it ourselves um, and point you to, towards the right direction in that. So finally, just to wrap up today, uh, it's been a very short talk, but uh, uh, what I want to uh, uh, hopefully have, have transmitted is that you know, AR is not the end goal. Uh, we, we really stress the need to keep it simple, make sure the AR experience is actionable. Um, choose wisely also in terms of, do I really need to have AR in this particular use case or is image recognition enough? Is it simple enough? It, will that work better in that context? Um, and also, if you're including advanced 3D model, models in particular, then uh, you know, get in touch with some experts or ask providers like us to refer you to an expert in that area, and they can, they can help you out with, uh, with setting things up. Finally, thank you for coming. We, as I say, we will be exhibiting at the, um, you know, in the expo area, so we have some cool demos there, including one on glass. We rolled out a new glass SDK uh, recently, so you can see that in action. And we will be participating in the Mobile Asia Expo. Our Chinese reseller is actually in the crowd. So if you're based in Asia, you can uh, speak to him as well. Uh, we'll be speaking at App Academy in Oslo next month. And also we'll be in Ismar uh, in Germany a little bit later as well in September. Thank you for uh, listening. And uh, you know, any questions, please, please let me know. OK, so do we have any questions for Richard? Okay, I guess not. So, uh, Rob, if you...